Hello, my name is Mazi Mutafa, Executive Director of Words, Beats, and Life, which is a hip-hop nonprofit based in Washington, D.C. Um, we do a few different things. Uh, uh, among the most prominent is we run an after-school program called the Urban Arts Academy. We work with 300 young people from throughout the District of Columbia, uh, providing uh, skill-based sets, classes in DJing, graffiti art, emceeing, uh, photography, fashion design, etc. So we do lots of different classes related to the elements of hip-hop culture. What we're experiencing as an increased level of interest in providing programming for young people to engage them. Um, one of the things happening here in DC is there's been a school takeover by the mayor. Um, so there's been a, a re-focused attention on resourcing young people and strategies to do that best. Um, and we've been one of the you know smaller beneficiaries of some of that renewed interest in that we've had a number of funders and organizations, individuals, express a greater interest in providing resources to communities and to individual young people and families um, that have for multiple generations been highly under-resourced and, and actually in communities where they're not so under-resourced but under-engaged. Um, so it, it's kind of a great time in the life of the organization but it's filled with a whole range of challenges. And so as an example, one of the things we do as an organization, um, we host an event called Remixing the Art of Social Change, a hip-hop approach, where we invite organizations from around the United States to come to Washington, D.C. Um, to do skill shares, whether, whether that's around curriculum, whether that's around management, whether it's around marketing strategies. And we found it to be really important to take members of the field and make them each other's experts. Um, one of the ways that this is really valuable is for organizations that are generally under-resourced in the area of capacity building. Um, they don't have to pay a consultant to come in and tell them how to do what it is that they're doing. They can actually go to a peer and learn from them. And in places where people are doing comparable work, that also provides an opportunity for partnership, cross-geographical collaboration, um, and even opportunities to expand on the kinds of work that you do. Um, one of the challenges I see coming down the pike, especially as it relates to funding, whether, whether it's globally or nationally, being cut as a result of um, the various financial crises various countries are going through, is going to be the need for some of the smaller organizations and potentially even some of the larger organizations to reevaluate why it is that they're separate organizations uh, and, to, and to identify potential um, points of intersection around which it makes sense to either organize together to work together, or even in some instances to potentially merge. We've actually had a couple of organizations in other parts of the country who are really impressed with the work that we're doing and the infrastructure we've worked to develop approach us about the possibility of merging in, in the next few years. Um, and so I think that's going to be one of the things that the nonprofits generally, community-based activists generally, are going to have to consider. What it, why do we do this work separately? What is it that's happening in Bangladesh that's, that's pretty similar to what's happening in Soweto? If anything, um, what, are the, what kind of opportunities exist to, to learn from each other, to cooperate with each other, and in some instances to even merge organizations and initiatives? I think that's going to be one of the primary things to be considered over the next couple of years. Why do we do this work separately? And how do we take people, that, people in organizations that are competitors and make them allies?